Welcome back everyone. Now as you can see we're still on our Microsoft page here, but that will change soon. In this video we're going to write our first HTML document, so to say our first web page. And I will guide you through the general structure of an HTML document and we will get to know our very first tags which we can use. As I said, there is a pool of tags which can be interpreted by browsers and which is therefore available for developers to use. So let's get into it. So we're going to start by creating a new file and which we call index.html or index.htm, doesn't matter. And you can create this file with whatever text editor you like. Obviously, I would recommend that you use some kind of IDE or an enhanced text editor like Sublime or Atom or a web IDE like for example Cloud9 or a web editor so to say like Blunker or CodePen. Um, you might just Google these things uh, because the default Mac and Windows um, text editors are absolutely enough to write HTML, but it is very <sighs> stressful, painful, as they don't provide syntax highlighting, they don't auto-indent anything. You have to really write out and structure everything yourself, and this can be quite a pain. So I'm going to use PHP Storm, which is my IDE I'm using for all my web projects. Um, but as I said, you're free to use whatever you like. So I will create this new file here and as I said I'm just calling it index.html and uh, this is yeah this is basically it now if we load this file we don't see anything because we haven't got anything in here and what we can do is just write some text hello world save it and reload this page and now we can see it hello world now that isn't the most awesome web page and actually you might correctly recognize that we didn't write any HTML at all. That's just plain text, right? And that is basically enough as the browser is able to render just plain text. It doesn't need the other tags. But for a real web page, you definitely need more information. You want to have some layout, you want to have some styling and you want to give a browser more than just plain text because with mere plain text, it can't do anything more than just write it out. So your typical HTML document consists of three things. The first one is that you declare the document type. So you tell the browser, this is an HTML document and specifically you're telling them which version of HTML you're using. Are you using version four, five or anything like this? Then you have your document head, which is a part of the document which will not be rendered to the screen, but which contains meta information, information for your browser. So this might contain information like the title of the current web page, which will be um, displayed here in your tabs, for example. Um, it might contain some information for search engines, like the description of your web page or for your device, how to render it, the width it should, to tell it the width it should be using and so on. It will also contain scripts or styling sheets you need to import into your document as I told you in the first video. So this is our head section. Oops. Our head section and then we get our body. This is where our content will live, where we will create all our layout and where we will not only have our layout and structure, but also the real content. So the document type for an HTML document, for, for an HTML5 document, as it's, I should say, is very easy. It's always just smaller than, and this basically is how you start every HTML tag. Every HTML tag is contained between smaller than and greater than signs. So that is a typical HTML tag. So this one, the document type, 
for an HTML5 document is exclamation mark doc type HTML. This tells the browser it's an HTML5 document. That's just the way it has been defined. Then we will have our head section and this will live between an opening and a closing HTML tag. Most but not all HTML tags do have an opening and a closing one. For example, the head section would be a head, close it and now my IDE also already entered the closing tag, but if this, that hasn't been done for you, you would just write smaller than slash and then type it out, hat greater than. Now that is your hat section living between this opening and closing tags. The body section, similarly, lives between body tags. So you do the same as with the head section, just write body and this is your body section. So here the content will live and here your meta information will live. For example, the title, which would appear here, would be entered by writing title, close it, so you have your title tags, opening and closing tag again. My first HTML page. Save it. And now if we reload this page, you can see we got our content here. And we got my first HTML page as the title here. Now that's all we're going to write in the head section as of now. In the content section, Let's just start by creating a basic headline and then a paragraph below it. So the headline would, for example, be an h1 tag, which is a predefined HTML tag, which says heading one, which is the biggest heading. We got available heading one to heading six and all between, obviously. So these are the defined headings we got available to choose from. A heading. And below we want to have a paragraph and this paragraph is the P tag, P. Also opening and closing. As I said, this is really the case for most HTML tags. There are a few exceptions and I will tell you when we come to them, but most do have an opening and a closing tag. Some random text. Now we save this, reload our page, and we got our heading and some random text. As you can see, the heading is already bold and much bigger than the random text. And this is what I meant in the first video. We have some basic generic styling for some of our tags. But only with CSS will we be able to change these styles. So we don't have to use this size and this font type. We can change that with CSS, but for now we're gonna live with plain HTML which give us, gives us this. And be aware that the exact look really depends on your operating system and browser. Because these, the browser and the operating system, these two components define the basic styling of your HTML tags. Now you might wonder how do I know which HTML tags I can use and what they do? Now, I could send you to, for example, this page here, w3schools.com slash tags, which has a reference of all available HTML5 tags. And it might be worth looking through them, but you might get intimidated by this list because it contains a lot of tags. And to be honest, there are some tags you'll, you'll rarely use. Some of them are not for use anymore. Some of them achieve things which are better than with CSS. For example, there is a small tag which makes text smaller, but it's better practice to do this through CSS styling and that not through small tags. And there are other tags which won't alter the view of your page, but instead they provide you with the means to create a more semantically correct web page, which is important when it comes 
uh, to things like screen readers for disabled people um, and these screen readers need to be able to interpret the text in a way that they know what these tags are doing or which section this, these tags are defining. So there are, as I said, tags like that, which don't look different, but have a different meaning. And therefore it's better practice to use them, although you could achieve the same look with different tags. And that is the case quite often, that you have several, several ways of achieving a certain look in your document. And then you should obviously always pick the semantically most correct. But if it is only that you want to look it great and don't care about things like accessibility of your web page and so on, um, you really got a broad bandwidth of options. On the other hand, there are some tags which are absolutely necessary if you want to achieve a certain, a certain thing. Like, for example, if you want to insert a link, there is only one link tag and you have to use that. And in the next video, I will guide you through the most important basic tags you will need to be able to create a web page which is fully comparable to, to one like this. Not by the look, obviously, as we're just ta talking about HTML, but from the HTML tag side, the pool you got available to use. So, see you in the next video. Bye.